Hey everybody, Mark Zachary with Next Step Home Loans, and uh, we are here today on our uh, podcast, Real Estate Pros of Houston. And today we have Eric Nelson, and Eric has uh, has agreed to come on and just tell us his story. And, and Eric's a great uh, uh, realtor in the Houston area, is uh, very successful in in his production and uh, and his ability to manage a team. So, uh, Eric, we appreciate you uh, coming on today and giving us a, a few minutes of your time. Oh, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I always like to uh, start this podcast, and sometimes it in, ends up being the only question I get to ask. But uh, we just like to hear your, hear your story. So tell us about your story, how long you've been here, where are you from, and, uh, you know, why do you, why do you do what you do? Oh man. So, um, I, I technically, you could say I, in, in a sense, I'm a native Houstonian. I was born in Pasadena. Um, and then, you know, first part of the life grew up in, in the Houston area and then moved to East Texas where I had family and then central Texas, uh, due to kind of family job relocates and all of that. Um, lived in the lagrange area small town kind of in between houston and austin country rural market um have family in weimar lived in weimar as well you know two small towns really close together and um last year of high school the last semester i had in high school i moved back to the houston area uh so kind of finished up high school in in waller you know Kind of rural market of houston but uh yeah. in the in the duration i got a, a job in corporate america while i was still in high school um at a garbage company uh, in the waste industry so i would go to school leave at half day drive into houston go to work uh rinse and repeat during during the work week and school week um and then i finished school got into college uh, uh journey ended up being at u of h Okay. Um, but in the middle of all that, um, you know, still working in corporate America at the same company, um, kind of progressed and, you know, got more responsibilities, got more, um, you know, salary increases or whatever. And in the midst of all of that met my wife, uh, who now my wife. Um, so she was in a different department and started working there while she was in school as well. Um, and we started dating and, you know, led to marriage. She left the, the trash industry, went to oil and gas um, shortly after we got or before we got married. And um, so, you know, as we were on the career track, right, like we're going to yeah. we're going to climb the corporate ladder. We're going to take over the world. You know, the American dream, right? Run for office and, one day. And no, 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 <laughs> no, no, uh uh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll run from the office, but not. Yeah, that's the that's office. yeah, that's uh, and, a more appropriate uh, comment there for sure. And so, um, you know, we we got married, and you know, went in. We're like, hey, we're not going to have kids. We're going to have dogs, like you know. And and we were both on the same page of no kids, not yeah. any real reason. It was just like let's let's enjoy life. And she came from a larger family um her mom's one of eight kids her dad's one of eight kids um wow. you know she only had one sibling but they the all the family on both sides pretty much live in the houston area so like one gathering would turn into like 100 people it was wild <laughs> yeah. and that, that's just like every time they get yeah together, huh? it's like hey let's have dinner and it <laughs> ends up being you know a thousand dollars um and so we you know we got married bought a house and this is all like early 20s um you know not too too far into um i i believe i got married at 23. Um, i'm right there with you i was 22. it was a 23. oh no hold on my wife's gonna get real mad 20 <laughs> yes 23 i got married uh okay. because we'll we'll hit thir 13 12 years this year i don't know we Boy, you better, I, I can do the math to, if I need to. Do you want me to edit this part yeah, out? Yeah, we can edit that part out. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, we are at 12 years this year in October. We'll, we'll celebrate 12 years. So I got wow. married at 23. And uh, so now we can go back and erase all of 
the prior <laughs> uh, math problems. And yeah. uh, so, you know, being in the garbage industry, which is a, a logistics based uh, business that um, at U of H, I graduated with a supply chain and logistics degree. Okay. And um, at that point, I had kind of gotten into process improvement, project management from the logistics, like rerouting of the trucks. I understood the dispatching piece, but this was more of like a larger scale. Do we need to Im improve certain markets and pockets in the Houston area or in, in the entire Houston market, which was almost all the way to Louisiana? And, um, you know, really enjoyed it. it. It was a lot of fun. You kind of get to have, see all different sides of the business, the, the good things you want to implement across um, the board and, and all of that. And, you know, I was wanting to get additional responsibilities as, you know, I was now married, I was finishing up school, like, you know, all of those things were coming in, in tune. Um, and it was like, I, it just never was happening. So I left the garbage industry, went to a, another logistics realm, um, not in the waste. And within 10 months, I'm getting a recruitment call to go back into the waste industry making far more money than I made when I was leaving yeah. um, with, with less work and responsibility. That's like the true American dream. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my wife, she was still in oil and gas. She was moving up. She was in the HR realm. She was, you know, doing well, um, you know, and, and then we kind of sat down and we're like, do we want to have kids? We kind of revisit, um, you know, I guess I was, it was five years into our marriage at the time. Um, and we're like, yeah, let's start a family. Um, so we had a kid and, you know, we kind of talked, are you going to work? Are you not going to work? And, you know, this and that. And at that point I was starting into, uh, kind of heavy travel in, in my career in the waste industry where I was traveling one to two weeks a month. Um, and then I was working remote. So, you know, we, we, had our son. He he will be. Were you having to travel uh, a, a, a long distance, or mm -hmm. was it just? Yeah. So okay. I was over the U.S. and Canada. Oh wow! Um, okay. So you know, I, I got to go to um, Toronto. You know, a little rural town up north of Toronto called Barry. Really, really nice. Um, mm -hmm. I went to Montreal a couple of times, uh, which is. The easiest way I can describe it, it's like a clean New Orleans, French Quarter, New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's it's a very nice, it, it was cool. And then I spent far too much time in Miami. Um, yeah. You know, everyone's like, oh, Miami, that's so cool. No, it's not. It might, it's cool with yeah. what you see on the pictures, but when you really get into the nitty gritty and then it, you're dealing with people's garbage, yeah, it's it's not clean. Um, and so we we had our son. And, you know, we kind of felt this pull of, of the travel was a lot to deal with. And then she was in oil and gas and that would have been in 2015, 2016 realm, um, when oil was kind of on the, yeah. on a downturn, um, you know, and she wasn't a manager, but yet they were having her severance people. And she's not, she's not that type of person. Like she doesn't have that. that that's a tough, tough yeah. role to, to play. It, so she had a, she had a severance, the, uh, the president of the company and oh. escort him out. And he was the one who oh. hired her like eight years prior. And so, yeah, it, she was like, that's kind of the final straw. And so we, you know, kind of made that commitment a year in. She's like, Hey, I, we, we had gotten into kind of real estate investing. Yeah. So to say, uh, you know, we wanted to be the next Chip and Joanna Gaines of Houston. And, <laughs> uh, you know, we we were going to be a, not be on TV, but we were going to do flips and we were going to, you know, that was going to be our legacy. Yeah. And um, and so she's like, let's get my real estate license. And I had gone through a merge um, at the company I was with an acquisition where my current position was potentially going to get severance. Um, so I had kind of like a backup plan that, you know, I had a job lined up if I needed it. And so we, she's like, why don't you do it too? You know, that way, if you don't use it, you don't use it. And, you know, I'll have mine active and we can, you know, see things on the market. We'll flip our own homes and, 
you know, we'll be able to list them and this and that. And I was like, okay, that's like, sounds like a great plan. So we both signed up at real est for a real estate licensor pretty neck and neck. There may have been a month apart. Mm -hmm. um, I had the benefit that I was working remote. So I had a little more downtime to kind of pump through the classes and she was still going to the office every day. Um, so her class time was a little bit slower. So she signed up first. I signed up second, but I finished first. <laughs> yeah, you beat her. And and um, and part of that was I had decided to take the severance package at that company and take the new position. So I I'll, then I had another little gap where I had about a two week paid vacation before I started the new job um, and got licensed, just kind of sat there, didn't really do anything, but we were doing a project at the time. We, we had just started to, to get into a project, a new flip project in a really, really good pocket of town and in and around the loop. And um, so we, we took off, did the project, listed it. And off of that one listing, we ended up with um, they, the buyers came in, waived representation because they were an attorney. And we ended up getting three more listings and four more buyers off of that wow. one house. Part of it was like we they would call us and we we were there. We weren't really trying to not have an agent on the other side, but all these people came flooding in without representation. Right. Um, and the home was already sold. So then it was, hey, how can we build a relationship with these people to help them? Because they obviously are looking for some guidance. Um, and it was at that point when we looked down 60 days later and was like investing is fun and great but we are looked at as a, a not very savory light um mm -hmm. no matter even though we knew the project and the work that we did and how much we were doing things right and above and beyond what your typical flipper had the reputation to do um and we were in a higher market it was sub 500 it was over 500 for wow. You know, I mean, when you're looking in 2016, 500K got you a lot of house, 600K sure got did. you quite a bit of home. Right. Um, and it still does, depending where where you're looking at. Um, and so, you know, we we built those relationships and we kind of sat down and we kind of re, restructured. You know, our son was a little over a year. She had fully left corporate America. I was still working full time and trying to do an investment. And then it's like, I'm really enjoying working with these clients. Like I'm enjoying showing yeah. them houses. I'm enjoying selling their house, building the relationship, helping them achieve a, a next step in their life. Um, and so we were like, let's pause, let's, let's pause investing and let's focus on real estate. Hmm. Let's really try to see where we can go with this. If we do one closing a month, like I have a full-time job that pays very well. Um, you know, my full-time job theoretically can pay everything that we need in life. Yeah. We do one transaction a month. We're fine. Um, and then it, you know, it's, it's funny how you, you draw everything out on paper, but then you kind of sell yourself short. Yeah. Um, so our first year as a licensed agent, we did almost 11 million. Is that right? In our first year of, of being licensed. And, so did and that, I didn't, was that uh, how many how many transactions was that? I mean, you're probably uh, looking at two or three hundred thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah, I want to say we, we did we did about thirty. Okay. 30, thirty maybe maybe forty, because there were some leases sprinkled in there. Um, you know, our investment property was in that, and you know, that that was about a million of it. And so, you know, there in it it so I, I don't remember the exact number. It was it was 30 ish. And Man, I didn't think people that have been in the business for 30 years that didn't do that in any year. And you did in your first. Yeah. So it, wow. I didn't really know what to compare it to. And so, well, I guess I'll backtrack because I am wearing this shirt right here. And, um, you know, my my wife was the one who because when you're licensed, you have to be sponsored. I'm not a broker. So, you know, we had to find a broker to hang her hat on. She said, call Magnolia Realty. I was like, they're in Waco. Um, she's like, no, they have a Houston branch. Um, yeah. 
and she's like, here's the number. And I was like, they're in Waco, you know? <laughs> and um, so I called and just so happened to the broker answered the phone, the broker of record, her name was Pam. And I was like, hey, you know, I just got my license, just passed my test and I'm looking for a sponsor. Um, she's like, we don't take new agents. She's like, but we'll be, I'll be in town on Thursday. Do you want to meet? I was like, yeah, let's, let's meet and, and see what it's like. And so we're sitting down and we're talking and the whole time she's like, I don't take new agents, especially in a market that I'm not in day to day. And I was like, well, I mean, we'd love to sign on if you'll give us a chance. Like I promise, like, we'll, we'll make sure that if it's not a fit, we'll know soon. Mm -hmm. um she's like i don't take new age she kept saying that like trying to talk herself out of signing us on um so tech we our first brokerage was magnolia owned by chip and joanna Gaines. um so that was like a good kind of opening line of like hey you know i work with magnolia realty owned by celebrities and yeah um you know i did we did meet them a number of times they they're very engaged um amazing people business owners Mm -hmm. and very aligned with our values in, in their values family first and and you know making sure that you're always providing a, an exceptional experience um and so we we were trucking along and you know at the end of the year it's funny I, on my desk back there because we just got an office i have the plaque where it was like top outer market team in the whole state of texas uh, um, for the magnolia yeah, for Magnolia, and, wow. and they were in six markets, and we we got one of the top teams for the entire outer market. And everyone was like, "How long have you been doing real estate?" And I'm like, "This is my first year." And they're like, "What?" Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I like I, I feel like I need to really step up. And they're like, "No, you don't understand. I've been doing this for ten years, and I've never sold more than seven. And yeah. and they're like, "And that was I did a two million dollar deal." in one transaction you know and i was like okay well maybe maybe we've got something going here and and i'm still working full time at, at a at a corporate paid position you had and, to have uh, a lot of people uh get the little uh, ticked off at you that you were uh, having such success in a short period of time and, and but i never felt that right like it wasn't like i wasn't satisfied but i never i don't get into the comparison game mm -hmm. so I didn't know who the top agent was in my market I didn't know what an average turn rate was uh, now I know that you know what is it 80 percent of realtors don't make it past two years in the business like oh yeah I yeah. I know that now but I think it's more than that now actually then it was just like I'm, I'm going to provide a service. I'm going to, to meet as many people as I can. I'm going to offer value. I'm not worried about the money. Like that's the back end. You need real estate help. I'm going to help you in any way that I can. And that was the platform that we ran off of and very genuine. My wife is a rock star. She, you know, she, she hung tight with me working 50 hours weeks in a corporate setting. And then showing from 6 p.m to 9 p.m you know yeah. five days a week like she she laid that in and was with me half the time um well, now, now she's still part of your your organization mm -hmm. is or your team right yes and okay. so we we did that you know two years so this was in 2016 um all of 2017 i i did that again uh, we we kind of matched our year two number. Uh, we didn't like explode out. I was still working full time. So we just kind of kept it, kept it kind of where we were. We didn't really dip. We were right around that 11, 12 million mark um, in year two. And towards the end of our second year, we kind of felt this, um, this pool of like, we can do this without this corporate overlay. Like, it's great to have the insurance. It's great to have 401k, but we, you know, the, the statement I told her, I was like, I can't serve two masters. Like I yeah. can't, I can't give a hundred percent to both. And as we continue to grow, I can't give a hundred percent to my family and my work and right. real estate, like something's going to give. And, um, and so we, you know, we, we took the first part of, of 2018 
he kind of felt the the pull to figure out that timeline to leave the the corporate world for me she had been out since or, you know earlier midway through 2016 she had been out mm -hmm. um and so it was at the end of january i called her on the way to the office and i'm like march 1st i'll put my notice in uh i always chuckle because i chose that date because that was bonus payout date oh, okay and i was like i'm gonna get my bonus i'm gonna walk in and i'm gonna be like hey here's my two-week notice and so it was like, hey, I just got to grind out, grind out one more month. I'll get paid. I'll get my bonus. And then, you know, we'll we'll kind of chalk our hands up and in and, and the, the piece. Well, they were a private equity owned company that was going through the process of gearing up to sell uh, to kind of phase out and exit um, to a larger PE group. <laughs> the next day I got pulled into the office and severanced. Oh no. And it but it paid me through March 3rd. Huh. <laughs> and so it was like, okay, 100% confirmation that this is this is yeah. where we're we're placed and what we're meant to do. Right. Um and so as of, you know, 3 weeks ago, it's been 5 years that we've been completely out of corporate America. Um, you know, the I get calls from recruiters occasionally from corporate but it's like yep. anything that would align with with me even considering it would come at such a cost yeah of you know travel um even if the income was where i wanted it to be the travel would be through the roof and you know it's it's real estate's peaks and valleys but yeah. you know we we kind of bought into to not growing a massive team, but adding value to our agents in the sense of where I'm here to mentor them. It's like, if you want to grind and, you know, sell a hundred homes a year, then we're going to be here to support you. If you want to sell, you know, five, five million dollar homes, like I'll help you get there as best yeah. as I can. Um, you know, and so it, it's, I don't have a massive team. It's myself, my wife, an assistant, an agent who's been with us for three and a half years now, and um, an agent who joined us back in December who has a very, very strong um, interior design and construction background. Um, okay. So we're kind of super well-rounded in yeah. being able to serve buyers. And if they want to do some renovations post-close, we've got people that can help right. serve yeah. sellers that can help stage your home and understand it. It's myself and four women. One of them is my wife. Um, so I am wrong 100% of the time. Yeah. Uh, so. I can imagine. I, I live. Uh, I lived in a house with with uh, three women. Now two of my daughters. They they're both married, and so I, now I only have one woman that uh, that I'm I'm uh, that's in the house with me, and that's my wife. So yeah, I was always wrong as well. So now I'm not you know, wrong as much, but I'm still wrong most of the time. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so, so let me ask you, do you, have, do you have any any regrets as as you left the uh, uh, corporate world and got into the real estate? Any regrets on uh, making that that move? Uh, to the only kind of look back would have been I wish I would have gotten a license at a younger age, mm -hmm. not necessarily to utilize it from a full term scale. Um, but I wish I would have thought to get a real estate license when there wasn't as much on the line, so to say, like when you're yeah. 21 years old, even 18 years old, and, and you get your real estate license, like, unless you've you've got a ton of responsibilities, which is a very small population, like the world's at your fingertips. And so you're going to grow with your clients. Your clients are going to grow with you. So by the time you're 30, you're, I mean, your book of business is phenomenal. You've got 10 years of experience. You, um, and then Do you find that, that your business is getting easier the longer you're, you're in it because you have uh, certain, um, practices to, to make sure that you stay in touch with your, 
your past clients and, and just always being the, the person that they come to over and over again? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll do a shameless plug to, to our sponsoring broker of compass. I mean, they, are there they're in the news good bad and indifferent and if you you go down the rabbit hole of opinions like i i would say that there's no such thing as a one size fit all brokerage sure um everyone has their fits of what they need for for me personally compass works great because their crm is all about the agent it's complex mm -hmm. but easy to use um you can make it much more difficult or you can just streamline it to where you're constantly in touch with your clients. Uh, we do regular newsletters. We do, um, we make sure that when a client comes <clears> in, <throat> they're allocated accordingly. Um, and we have other kind of processes in place to, to stay in touch with our clients um, and add value, but at the same time, not shy not away from... Sense. Yeah. letting them know that, Hey, we we're here to help, but if you have anyone else, we can help. We're here to listen as well. Right. You know, I, I teach a class and it's a, uh, uh, it's called the top five reasons agents fail and why you won't be one of them. If you do these five things. And one of them is people don't keep track of their, their business. They don't even have a CRM in a lot of cases mm -hmm. because well, I guess they don't want to spend the money to do it or they're just not organized enough to do it. And so they're, they're so transactional focused that they don't even think that this person is, is going to need me again in five, six, seven years. They're off chasing the next deal when it's so much easier to have somebody use you again than it is to go try to convince somebody else to use you. So I, I'm, I'm shocked at the number of people that don't even have a, a, a CRM at, at all. And so it, it's great to hear that, that you have. And I, I can tell you something I, that I see more often among the successful agents that I interview is that they have a CRM and they stay on top of their people and they don't let people forget about, mm -hmm. hey, I helped you buy or sell back in 2015 and i'm still in the business and and i'm i'm here again so kudos to you for for doing that so yeah i mean it and i mean you have to be personable right like you you've got to do the job do it well but then be liked right and be nice right. and you know i i have a, a client that pre-housing crash when no doc loans were a thing yeah. um you're a very young man but I, I don't know if you were doing it then. I'm sure you've heard stories. I've been doing uh, it 28 years, so I, re I remember them very well. Yeah, so he said he bought 47 homes with no doc loans. Um, or in, wow. he, he turned them all into rentals. He said he typically bought them all by himself. Um, he was a great guy, fierce negotiator, and didn't like agents at all and you know mm -hmm. it, we ended up getting in touch i ended up helping him buy and sell a home um and his lender that he had worked with for the majority of those 40 something transactions mm -hmm. they were sitting at a closing table and he was making a fuss about something and he was and um basically the lender looked at him and said this is the first agent i've seen get you to the closing table whatever he did you need to keep him around. He may want to fire you, but you can't fire him. <laughs> and, you know, to this day, uh, him and I, we stay in touch. He's bought a couple other properties, sold a couple other properties, helped, yeah. uh, helped him rent them out. Um, they don't live in Houston anymore, but his wife made partner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we casually stay in touch. There's not a like friendship, but there's a very understood yeah. business yeah. relationship that, wow. um, you know, we, you can, if you go about it the right way and you're just genuine, you'll attract what, yeah. what, you know, even the most difficult people that what may seem difficult probably aren't as complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, um, you know, I always, 
I always say there, there's 25% of the public out there that wants to do business with you, no matter what, they'll stay in your corner, no matter what. And as long as you treat them right and with respect and things like that. So very, very interesting. This business ought to get easier the longer we're in it because of the, the sphere of influence that, that yeah. we're building. But if you do it the wrong way, that, that's not going to be the case for you. So I want to back up way back to early in your very, very part, very first part of your your story, and it caught my my attention about having to because this is going to be the question. You know, what's a what's a challenge you had? But the question is, you know, way back when you started, you said that you had to go to a high school uh, late. I guess switch high schools late, mm -hmm. like. 11th or 12th grade, I don't know which, but that had to be extremely difficult. And and I always, I always told my girls, hey, if we're going to move anywhere, I'm going to have you into the high school before we move, because once you're in the high school, I won't pull you out, because I think mm -hmm. that's a very tough time to, to be moving around. So that had to be a, a pretty good challenge. What, uh, how, how was it for you? Was that, was it a challenge? Uh, no, I mean, I was kind of on the mindset of, of let's just finish and go. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't tell you a single person that I graduated high school with, like technically graduated, walked the stage and all of that. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't name one person. I was there for yeah. one semester. I went in, did what I had to do, got my grades and walked out of principal because I was the first like neither one of my parents had a high school diploma. Okay. Um, and so out of kind of pure principle to put the stamp on breaking the, the seal, um, I walked, but no one knew me. They, I didn't know anyone. And I walked across the stage, walked out, went to dinner and never looked at that high school again. Interesting. Well, you know, I had a guy, a manager once and he said, man, it's, if you adjust to change, he said, it's going to be, life's going to be much easier on you. That And that's a pretty good uh, adjustment to, to change. Just go in with an attitude of, hey, I've got to get this done. And when I get it done, I'm, I'm off to my, my next chap chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, yeah, let me ask you uh, another question. Uh, you're, you're much younger than I am. But is there something that, that you have wanted to do that you haven't done yet, and, but you still plan on uh, doing before a certain age or a certain year? Or what, what's, uh, what's something that you have wanted to do and just haven't done yet? Um, if this is the part where people say skydiving. Ah, that's, not, that's, that's, that's good. That's not me. Oh, it's not. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so airplanes are not meant to be jumped out of, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to convince me otherwise. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not this big high adrenaline junkie, um, you know, but if, <clears throat> if it's, if there's one thing that it's hard for me to say I've ever accomplished because it's never, it's a never ending accomplishment or it never, it, there's a never ending. It's, to be the best husband, the best dad that mm -hmm. I can be. Um, so, you know, there's never really this feat of saying, Hey, I've accomplished that because you know, you, you, you're not going to know you accomplished it if you've yeah. accomplished it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, if, well, they, if they always gonna... say that you, you don't realize uh, what, if you were a good parent or bad parent until the grandkids come around and, and you get to watch your kids raise their kids. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a little bit uh, before you, before you know uh, how you turned out, but I got a feeling you're doing pretty well. I try, I try. He, we, we've got two now. So that was part of the myth story was, um, you know, COVID we, we sat down and we're like, let's have another kid. And we're like, do we really want to do that? Yeah. Um, so but how we, old we are did. you now? So Johan is seven and a half. Okay. Um, and he didn't let me forget about the half. And then Victoria <laughs> is almost 20 months. Okay. So she'll be two in June. 
Wow. So she was born on the first day of summer. Um, okay. Yes, and it was hot. Both of our kids are summer babies. Um, bless, bless my heart. Bless my yeah, wife's you heart. Yeah, you should have planned a little bit better. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, she breezed through winter and spring like nothing, and then summer <laughs> was even worse. Uh, the week Johan was born was the hottest week on record in like a decade. And the oh, average man. temps with heat index was like 106. Oh, and God. we were in the hospital. I was like, I'm cranking this down because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying the light bill. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it, it's it's been a, a, you know, I guess if I go with an accomplishment from a, from a material perspective, asset so to say um one of the things that we're we're trying to work on is we want to get a rental property in in theory for one for each kid uh and okay. then one for each of us so you know theoretically we want to have like four rental properties um to where whenever they go off to to college if they're not on a scholarship we can sell it and there's your pay yeah. or however we structure that piece right. um right. and so you know that's kind of been been the the kind of next step of yeah. where we are in our career is try to to add some factors to where as the team grows my production can kind of step back mm -hmm. um you know to to not have to be as uh engage and not not engaged but as yeah busy in the organic growth i'm managing right and and living off the referrals rather than the net new yeah well are you getting to uh, as as your kids are at, at this age and and they'll be you know starting to play ball or do whatever their activities are uh, are you getting to do any of that uh, like coaching or anything <laughs> like uh, that for uh, your family so you know kind of going back to to the the involved dad part i'm going to be the sideline dad coach all day yeah. um i've had to help fill in last last season with uh flag football when both of the coaches couldn't make it so they had asked another coach to help out and then yeah. i kind of stepped in to help herd the cats during practice yeah at one point him and i looked at each other we're like this ain't for us <laughs> <laughs> um and you know it it i i make it a point to be at as many of the practices um, you know, 90 That's plus awesome. percent and, um, games are, are essentially non-negotiable, um, yeah. that I will be there. Um, there might come a point later in his life or in her life where, you know, they're seven hours away or something. I will do my best to, to make even those. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't ever want him to look, look up and be like, my parents aren't here to support me or anything like that. Like that's very, yeah. um, very big big non-negotiable in, in my, in my life. Yeah. Um, and that's so important. I mean, cause man, I'll tell you right now, Eric, that, that time will pass faster than our 38 minutes together uh, today has. I mean, my girls, I coached them and I, I took them to my youngest was in dance and, and they both ended up playing uh, fast pitch softball for years. And I coached them every year. And then my the oldest got got into a uh, uh, marching band during high school, and we just didn't miss anything. And now you look back, you're like, my gosh, that that really, mm -hmm. really flew by. Yeah, Way I mean, I, I, I feel when you're early in your career of real estate, and you know, this is you know, talking to agents, newer agents, like having no in your vocabulary is hard and you know pick and choose when you say no because you never really know when that is your next client and you're trying to build your business um but i also learned that very rarely will a client not understand a family yeah. obligation within reason right if every time they want to see something you're like hey i got i got this thing uh right. then you know that's a little bit harder but if if they're wanting to see something at 10 a.m on a saturday and you know you've got a baseball game say hey you know kids got a baseball game at 10 can we do one like yeah you know don't don't say no but <clears throat> don't miss something that that you can't yeah undo Give them options 
And, you know, and I think like I had to learn that a very hard way. I mean, my son's first year of life, he was with the babysitter more than he was with us. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he, we, we had three babysitters that were kind of like, and he was in full-time daycare. So, you know, with our daughter now, we, we see so many things that we didn't see with him from like an experience, you know, uh, like we don't remember this with the first one because, well, he was in daycare all day. And, you know, so yeah. it's like, and I understand everyone's situation is different and, and, you know, I'm not, I understand that daycare has to happen, but there's also yeah. those moments in life where, um, you know, it, it work, work will be there, but your family, uh, you get a short window. Yeah. I, I had a, a similar situation that really that that day changed the way i did my business but i i was in the middle of disney world and and i was taking a call about uh, a loan and uh it was a guy just arguing about some some little piddly thing and and i looked over and, and here i am on the phone and the magic kingdoms right behind behind me and and i look over and my kids were dad come on let's go and and i yeah. thought you know what? I, I am, I've missed a boat here and you know what? I, I'll talk to you when I get back, Mr. Borrower, and we'll get this worked out because you're not closing until, you know, six months down the road because you, they were building <laughs> a, a build, building house. And I was, I was uh, in charge of the mortgage operation at this uh, development. And uh, I just said, you know, we'll do this later. I'm going to spend time with my kids right now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, well, look, I I, uh, I know you tried to uh, say, hey, I'm going to try to keep this below 30 minutes, but uh, we both uh, we both missed that uh, opportunity. But uh, uh, we're going to kind of wrap it up real quick. But if someone is to want to get in touch with you or want to maybe visit with you about, you know, joining your team, number one, are you uh, accepting uh applications to be on your team and how would they yes. uh, reach you uh yeah so i mean we we are potentially looking to grow for the right fit for both parties um you know so my number is 281-660-1009 uh i'm in har eric nelson uh you know pretty much google anywhere you know the bayou city team anything like that mm -hmm. uh will come up Make sure it's the Bayou City team, not Bayou City Life Group or Bayou City Commercial. There, there's a couple other okay. ones out there. Okay. Um, yeah, but husband wife team, Eric and Erica Nelson. And I'll I'll put those names and numbers on uh, the description of the podcast as well, and then also when we're uh, uh, loading it uh, up to Facebook and and uh, YouTube. Uh, so right. we'll we'll make sure uh, to get all that that information out there, but. But Eric, man, I sure appreciate uh, you joining me today, and and it's been a, a pleasure getting to uh, to know you. And very easy to see why you're so successful, not only in the business world, but as as a human being and a father. And and I uh, can't wait to you know get to get to know you a little bit better. And uh, uh, you're just you're what this industry needs. Um, more like you and the, there's there's so many people that are part-timers and they're they're so transactional like i talked about yeah. and uh, and they're not able to do this work-life balance and and uh so kudos to you for doing a great job so far and you're only you're only just getting into the into this really i mean you haven't been here that long and you're doing so so well well, so thank you. Man. I, pre I appreciate it. It was a great, great being on here and uh, truly an honor. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, guys, we'll let you go for now. Uh, my name again is Mark Zachary. I'm with Next Step Home Loans. If there's any mortgage questions you have uh, or just in, if you need any questions at all, just give us a call at 832 504 9014 or you can visit my website as well. And that is nextstephomeloans.com. But uh, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. And uh, we'll see you next time uh, on Real Estate Pros of Houston.